What is going on? My name is Smitty from the Fantasy Football Show, and you're watching the ADP Show, where I break down underdog fantasy's ADP because it's legit ADP. People are playing contests. They got skin in the game. They're not taking off after round seven to jump in another mock draft and ruining the data. Abandoned mock drafts make the worst ADP because auto-drafted teams keep piling on bad data on top of bad data. You want a, a, a really legit ADP ranking to look at. Underdog is the way to go. And if you want to play best ball where there's no lineups to worry about, you can have one draft right after the other. All you got to do is go to smitty1.com, click on the banner right here. This exact banner will pop up. Minimum $10 deposit. Use promo code SMITTY. The link will enter it for you if you just go to smitty1.com. Free phone call from me. $25 bonus cash from Underdog. Limited time on both of them. So sign up now. Don't wait until week one. Don't miss out on getting the, the free phone call and bonus cash by doing it right now. I'm going to talk about the players I like on this ADP ranking. I'm going to talk about the players you need to avoid. Talk about winning your league, AJ Dillon, at 99. If he gets in there, he's going to win you your league single-handedly. And if he doesn't, if he doesn't start a game, if Aaron Jones stays healthy, guess how many TDs this guy could score in a backup role? 8 to 10? We're talking about all of that and more. The Fantasy Football Show begins now. This is the Fantasy Football Show with your host, Smitty. Top five running back. You're watching the Fantasy Football Show. I'm Smitty. Right in front of your face are roughly the top 11 overall players according to the underdog ADP rankings and if I had to talk about one or two guys that stand out right in this range, I would say, you know my stance on Henry by now. I feel like this is way too high for a guy that has the, the kind of mileage that he's looking at. He doesn't catch a lot of passes, so in PPR, there's a lot of risk involved taking him number three. Coming off a 2,000-yard season, which usually cuts running back production in half at least, touchdowns in half, yardage in half, and sometimes running backs fall apart. 400 carries last year, 303 carries the year before. The man's going to surpass 1,000 carries with than like a 2.8 time frame going backwards. I don't like that at number three overall. You know who I like at number three overall? Zeke Elliott. And while he's not going that much further down, you can't really call this a, a bargain. People ask me the question daily. Like I get at least maybe, uh, I would say 45 times a day, I'm asked, hey Smitty, who should I take at number three or number four? My answer is Elliott because he's going at 5.8. He fits the bill, he's there. 80 to 90 percent of the time right now at uh at four or three overall you get tony pollard tony pollard is the best backup running back in the entire nfl aj dillon's right there too i love aj dillon owning aaron jones and aj dillon's pretty darn secure as well but elliott and pollard if you can guarantee me you're getting pollard you're grabbing him around earlier than his adp zeke pollard is my number three overall over cook i have mccaffrey one I have Alvin Kamara too. No, I'm not worried about the quarterback situation. Given the Saints have Winston and Taysom Hill, if one is an effective, the other is going to come in. And I like that ability to, to have a way out if, if things aren't moving well without Mike Thomas. Kamara should be... Kamara could be focused on by defenses. There's some risk involved with Kamara, but Kamara is the definition of consistent because the man is at 81, 81, 81, and 83 receptions in all of his four years in the NFL. That is crazy. Four straight years over 80 receptions, and people complain about Taysom Hill last year. Oh, Taysom Hill didn't get him the football. He had 83 receptions. He broke his own 81 record streak. 83 balls this man pulled in. And people are complaining and worried. He had an amazing 2020 and people doubted him coming into 2020 because he had a banged up 2019. A 2019 where he still pulled in 81 receptions. Are people understanding that this guy disappointing pulls in 80 plus receptions? No matter what's going on, the man has time. Injured, disappointing, whatever the case may be, he drops 80 plus receptions for you. And people are worried about him and complaining about him. Kamara, easy number two overall for me. I worry about Cook. You do have Madison, just like Pollard can safeguard Elliott. Lat Murray can kind of safeguard Kamara. You need to grab Chuba Hubbard if you own McCaffrey. All very, very capable backups. It just so happens they're all very talented backup running backs too. It's not like they're just a backup. Like Henry. Henry has no backup that I'm interested in. 
If Henry went down, his backup wouldn't replicate anything he's doing. Backup running backs aren't just to be had because you got the starter. Cuffing a player is only important when the backup is a competent backup. Tony Pollard is a top five to 10 running back per start. In that Dallas offense, he is that talented. I don't care what anybody says. I know what my eyeballs tell me. McCaffrey one, get Chuba Hubbard. You have to have Hubbard. Kamara two, get Lat Murray. Elliott number three overall. You have to have Pollard. I probably roll with Cook at number four. You need to own Madison. Every single running back I've named has a super handcuff. All four running backs have a super handcuff. I'm not drafting Henry in the top five. You can click right here to watch the video why. I don't need to beat a dead horse with it because I go over it for like 26 minutes. So check out the video and, and let me know what you think in the comments below. This ADP seems high to me, 6.3 for Kelsey. I get it that having a positional advantage is a good thing, but Waller was in my top 10 breakouts for 2021, my top 10 bold predictions. Hawkinson was also in my top 10. There are tight ends to be had. Me, I'm going after Noah Fant, Tyler Higby, Logan Thomas, who finished number three out of tight ends in 2020. Robert Tunyon, 11 TDs last year, finished number four for all tight ends. Goddard could be a breakout. I'm getting one of those guys later, and I'm gonna use this pick right here, 6.3 on an Adams, on a Hill, on a Diggs. I love Diggs. I quietly don't tell anybody like Diggs number one out of all the wide receivers in 2021. I go back and forth on Diggs and Devontae Adams, but I like Diggs, man. I love the Diggs and Allen stack. And instead of going Henry or instead of going Henry or Kelsey here, I'm going Adams Hill, Diggs or Diggs Adams Hill. This is my number one wide receiver. He's going 9.7. I'd take him at number seven. I don't care. I don't care if I'm reaching a little bit. I don't care if people take other wide receivers ahead of him. Diggs to me is going to return this value pretty easily. He will be more consistent than any other wide receiver in fantasy football. He and Josh Allen will dominate third and fourth quarters. Even when they're up by two touchdowns, they'll be that annoying stack that is still throwing touchdowns in the fourth quarter. And you're like, can you dial it back a little bit? Don't be the guy playing Allen and Diggs. Be the guy owning Allen and Diggs. Get your hands on that high scoring fourth quarter production that's so annoying when it happens to you and you're facing somebody and they just keep throwing in the third and fourth quarter. And you're like, come on already. I don't mind Aaron Jones here i like him a little bit more in like the 13 to 15 area like in principle i want him to be my second drafted player even if it's the top of round two with cam Akers going down with barkley being iffy who we're talking about next the running backs are getting pulled up jt dropped down to 16.9 below gibson chubb eckler barkley aaron jones how quickly they fall see how accurate this adp data is Taylor's already dropped that far. Other ADP data probably shows Taylor in the top eight. It's not responsive to the to the real life scenario. Because I think Gibson is as valuable, if not more, than Aaron Jones, or at least equal. I, I like a Gibby down here versus an Aaron Jones here. I'd rather take Diggs or Ridley in this range right here and then get my running back here if my plan is to walk away with one running back and one wide receiver. Now, I never plan for anything. I go with flow of draft because if you don't you leave value on the table if you walk into a draft and go i'm going running back running back smitty don't you like robust rb going running back running back running back running back running back i am not a proponent of going running back running back because it's a, a position of scarcity i don't care what i care about is maximizing value at every single draft pick because if you do that you walk away with the best team you may have a hole at running back two. You may create a void on your team where your running back two has this platoon of players, but that is the fun part about fantasy football. And that's the part where if you fill that void and you do go best player available, you're gonna have that team where people look back at the end of the year and go, how did you get that team? You can't do that by going, okay, I'm gonna go in and just draft running back, running back, running back, then draft all these underrated sleeper wide receivers and literally you walk out with like that wide receiver crew that that you have to like talk yourself into liking. I've got a lot of good talent there. They're, they're all capable of being wide receivers. I like balance, man. And going best player available traditionally gives you more balance than forcing a, an approach before you even walk in the door. And while most people will be like, I gotta get my running back with my first pick and they, they force Aaron Jones, I don't hate Aaron Jones, or they force Barkley or even Eckler, I'll go Gibby. Gibby can be my running back one all day long 
and that allows me to upgrade my wide receiver to my favorite wide receiver, Diggs. Now, I like DK. I like AJ Brown. I love Justin Jefferson, but, but my number one wide receiver is Stefan Diggs. And I want my number one wide receiver. As much as I like the other guys, I want my number one. Same thing with the quarterback argument. I love Herbert. You know how much I love Herbert. The dude will punch you in the throat. I love Kyler. But none of that changes the fact that Josh Allen is my number one quarterback. Herbie might throw 40 touchdown passes. I really believe he can. But Josh Allen can throw for a lot more yards and maybe 45 to 50 touchdown passes. There is a big difference in my mind. Enough of a difference I'm willing to overpay according to the consensus and, and grab him over a Gaskin or a Woods or a Cooper Cup. You're completely destroying your chances of winning, Smitty. When you draft a quarterback in round three, moron. It all depends on who's available. If J.K. Dobbins is there at 3.1, do you think I'm going to take... A quarterback? No, I'm taking JK. If CD Lamb falls to 3.2, probably won't anymore. But if he did, and your grandma doesn't take him at, at, at 2.12, and he falls to like 3.1, 3.2, I'm taking him. I'm not taking Josh Allen at 3.1, 3.2, 3.3. If those big name ballers are available, like Lamb and JK and AJ Brown, Justin Jefferson could fall. Justin Jefferson could, could fall to round three now with a shoulder scare. I'm taking those guys over any quarterback. Of course I am. But when all those guys are gone and you're looking at Gaskin, you're looking at Woods, we'll get to that range and talk about it. Why am I gonna pass on the number one potential overall scorer in fantasy football? Because people say, the positions deep and, and i guess part of the reason i'm talking about that now is how much i want people to own digs here and then allen later like i i love the stack gibby one of my favorite picks so far through 16.9 is gibby at 16. he arguably like if you take anything away from the first half of this video gibson could be a top five running back this guy has christian mccaffrey potential and he's going at number 16 overall the risk is baked in, baked in boy. totally baked in totally totally baked in definition of baking in all the risk right here at 16. you're not going to believe this but i don't even love this value for jt here at 16.9 i will say that i think jt will become one of the better trade for buy low guys by mid-season because he's probably going to disappoint through the first half of the year no good quarterback the chains won't be moved downfield very often they won't be in scoring position a ton they'll maybe lean on Hines and Mack a lot because they're gonna have an inexperienced quarterback that they want to protect they can't afford another quarterback to go down so you might see JT get shoved into the PPR game a little bit later in the year it's gonna be frustrating his owners will be pulling their hair out and you can swoop in and still grab a guy I really did like a lot when Wentz was healthy and we thought that Taylor was going to get a bunch of PPR work he still could but I think there's a real good shot that production gets delayed his breakout is going to be slow moving I like Ridley at 13.3 not to go backwards but I kind of skipped down I, I really do think Barkley is a risk at 11.8. You can look at me weird all you want. You can comment below if you if you want. I might be wrong. I keep telling everybody in the videos lately, a lot of the avoid calls that I have are not absolute. You know what I mean? I see it in the comments a lot. Like, Smitty, you're going to be wrong. How can you not like Barkley? Smitty, you're going to be wrong. How can you doubt uh, Derrick Henry in 2021? I get the knee-jerk reaction from people when I call out a player they have you're just not going to be happy hearing someone talk down a player you already own you naturally want to defend them it's, it's okay i get it i'm not mad at the people that that have a, a quick reaction to one of my predictions but i try to explain that when i toss out an avoid call it's not absolute i'm not telling you barkley can't earn top 11 overall value i'm not even telling you barkley can't be a top five running back right out of the gate in week one of course he could be that good out of the gate but what are the odds of it are the odds great I, I don't think they are are the odds in favor of him potentially not being fully ready by week one even if he starts and goes out there and gets 12 carries are the odds more likely in favor of him being limited for four weeks are are the odds a little bit more in favor of him missing week one than than playing week one as of right now i would say yeah and, and if you're gonna say that i'm absolutely against him 
again, I'll give it a, a percentage. I'll say 25 to a 35% chance he plays week one. And if he does play week one, I'll give it a 30% or a little less chance that he is a top five running back in week one if he does start week one. I, I know what you're thinking. Coming from 19 years of fantasy football professional evaluation and analysis, anybody saying, you're wrong, Barkley's going to ball out, you watch, you wait and see. Anybody saying that, that's all blind. That's all blind support for a guy that is literally in a position where he needs to prove he's healthy, not the other way around. You shouldn't be investing in a guy at top seven to 11 overall value where he's got something to prove to you before you could get the value back that you're paying. Too many people are looking at this the wrong way. The people that are looking at Barkley as a value at 10 right now instead of a cautionary tale where I could be wrong, but I'm taking Devonte Adams or Diggs instead. How am I off base by going Diggs or Adams over Barkley? I'm taking the safe approach. It's a cautious approach, but it's not a lesser approach. It's not a, a, an approach where I'm stepping back and going, I'm gonna take the safe route. I'm gonna take the safe route and get less points, but it's safer. It could be more points. It could be the same amount of points, but it is safer. It is safer. It doesn't mean it's a lesser option. So I, I'm trying to wrap my head around the negativity behind not wanting to buy into Barkley at 11 overall until he's proving it to me. The alternative is Adams. I'm, I'm not gonna lose a wink of sleep if I tell someone to go Adams or Diggs and Barkley's a top five running back in week one. I won't lose a wink of sleep. It was the right decision at the time with a whole lot less risk. I don't like the 11.8 ADP. I won't like it. I won't like it tomorrow. And the news today that he's being activated from the PUP list and that he's gonna start practicing very, very shortly is triggering a lot of the same responses. Like this is identical to the Mike Thomas news. When, when the news broke, Mike Thomas had surgery. Did you know? I had DM after DM from people saying, Smitty, I told you Mike Thomas was going to be fine. He already had the surgery. Now you better move him up on your rankings, bro. You better move him up on your rankings, pal. And, and my response to them was, and you know who you are, because there's about a, a hundred of you. My response was, bro, I, I know you're excited. I'm a little excited to hear that he has surgery too, but we don't even know what the details are of the surgery. Did he have surgery on the deltoid ligament in the ankle? The one he needed to have surgery on right when it happened last year? And then he played on it, and then he practiced on it all off season, probably damaging it more? They didn't have answers. All people heard was, he had the surgery, he's gotta be fine, he's Mike Thomas, he's gonna be fine. He's Mike Thomas, Schmitty. I mean, it's gotta work out. It is so important to look deeply into the injury type situations and error on the side of caution. ACL tear, error on the side of caution. There's no reason to take the risk on Barkley at 11, especially seven or eight, especially five or four. There are people already talking about vaulting him back into the top four overall. Why do that when you have no information to justify that he is worth more than a Devontae Adams or a, a Stefan Diggs or even a Gibson for that matter? And you can laugh all you want at Gibson over Barkley, Ho, ho, ho! Schmitty's really gone off his rocker this time. Gibson over Barkley? And then, of course, the comment also includes a, as long as Barkley's healthy, you're gonna be wrong. As, as if that's not part of what I'm even talking about. Like, as if injury isn't part of my argument. Barkley needs to prove to you he's ready for 11, seven, especially three or four overall value. Give me Gibson over Barkley. Little bit early here. I don't mind him as my second drafted player. It's almost your second drafted player, but I'm just letting you know, I, I like him. I like Eckler. I just like him at 13 or 14 a little bit better. Hopkins, this is about this is about right for Hopkins. He's always a, a touch undervalued and disrespected, but I, I love Hopkins. If Barkley climbs back up, you're gonna have some of these guys dropping. Gibson will drop a little bit, which is good news. Najee Harris could drop a little bit. That's good news. DK and AJ Brown are, are two of my favorite. Bookend 2.12 and 3.01 picks. I like Justin Jefferson in this like range. 2.12, I love him. 3.01. The injury to JJ, which is making him day to day. He's not out by any means, but people are freaking out about the AC joint. While I'm not happy 
JJ, injured the AC joint. It could be a blessing in disguise because I really believe that people will be dropping him into the 3.1 value range. Joe Mixon failed you in 2020. Despite finishing as a top 11 or 12 running back in 2019, he failed you in 2019 because he didn't show up for half of a year. I know because of my HeySmitty.com email and text advice. I heard it every day. People are like, Smitty, I'm one in six. What do I do? Joe Mixon screwed me. I can't even make the playoffs anymore unless I win out. I can trade him away for a ham sandwich right now. Do I do it? So don't give me that, okay, he finished strong. If you traded for him mid-season, congrats. You probably won your league by that move. But that's a specific move, a great move. I liked him when he was going in the third round of January, but he's climbed and climbed. Now he's at 19.7. Way too rich for my taste. I take JJ, who's down, not Julio. It's not Julio anymore. I'm sorry. Justin Jefferson. Has taken the title JJ at me. I take Jefferson. I take JK Dobbins. Oh, that one's going to burn a lot of you. Gus, Gus Edwards, buddy. We'll get to JK. Don't worry. Najee Harris at twenty point eight is fantastic value. This guy's a, a top fourteen to sixteen overall pick. There's my boy JJ dropping down like I predicted. And again, underdog fantasy. Go to smitty1.com. Ten dollar deposit gets you a phone call and twenty five dollar bonus cash. Limited time. Go go go. Do it now. According to underdog ADP, it's so accurate. He's dropped. He's dropped. He was going way higher than this. Now he's dropping to 23.1, almost into the 3.01 range. Imagine getting Clyde boy, Clyde Edwards Alaire, and JJ. Justin Jefferson at 2.12 and 3.1. This reminds me a lot of when we were drafting in January, February and getting JJ and Clyde. If you've got the 1.1 coming up in a, in a draft and you're drafting early, move it ahead, move it to tomorrow. Draft McCaffrey at 1.1, Justin Jefferson at 2.12, and Clyde Edwards Alaire at 3.1. Championship. And CD Lamb. Oh, you hate to see it. He's climbing into round two. We knew it was going to happen. Look at this 24.7. Climbing into the 2.12 makes me sick. And to think of all the disrespect we got when people said Smitty. He's not even the number one wide receiver on his team. It's Cooper. Smitty, uh, CD Lamb? Top five? You've got to be one complete moron. We have receipts for it all over the channel. People cropping left and right on the Lamb is a top five wide receiver prediction that I've been spouting out since January 1. Welcome to round two. The question is, do we take him in the second round? Not yet. Pump the brakes. He's only at 24.7. He's right on the on the verge. But is he a third rounder anywhere in round three, 3.1 to 3.12? Of course. Take him as your third drafted player anywhere in round three. He will destroy that value in a good way. This is a little early for me for Waller. I'll take Waller in like 3.3 to 3.5, but not in round two. I like the Higby. Fant, Logan Thomas, Goddard, Tunyon. I like that approach way better. A tad early for me. I like Keenan Allen, but I like a lot of other players better. Like with Waller, a little bit early for me. I take him in that 3.3, 3.4 range. Kittle, uh, a wee bit early for me. I don't mind him in the, the mid third to late third round. I think that could be a steal. McLaurin, a little bit high. Swift, don't go near. This this is value he can't return, in my opinion. But Swift, I mean, think about this for a second. Okay, let's assume that, that he didn't lose his quarterback, Stafford, and they didn't get golf in return. Let's assume they don't just win two or three games and they're an awful offense and team in 2021. Let's assume they didn't lose Kenny Galladay and the ability to stretch the field. Let's assume they've had a stud running back since Barry Sanders, which they have not. All those negatives right there. Let's assume none of those exist. And let's go off of what the coaching staff is saying and what they're saying only. Back in May, OC Anthony Lynn referred to Jamal Williams as his classic A-back, and he referred to Swift as his B-back. Well, okay, that's just one report, Smitty. Then in June, Anthony Lynn says he's going to ride the hot hand in 2021. It's just coach speak, Smitty. That's just a coach uh, speaking there, Smitty. And that's just Anthony Lynn speaking. No, no, no. Lions coach Dan Campbell also referred to DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams as a one-two punch on a team that won't be able to move the football 
depth down the field on any kind of consistent level. On a team that won't score touchdowns like they used to, red zone opportunities are not going to be near the same. On a team that will be down in the third and fourth quarter, do you disagree that the Lions will be down in the third and fourth quarter? They will be throwing the football, game scripting out the running attack. In a situation where they're sharing carries, how are you going to rely on a running back to get all of his work in the PPR game when he's dividing the workload up in an offense that's going three and out a lot of the time in the third and fourth quarter? Just because you're throwing a lot in the third and fourth quarter doesn't mean you're completing passes and moving the chains, people. Stay so far away from this DeAndre Swift third round ADP, not to mention he's an injury risk. <laughs> I like Woods, but this is way too high. Look at J.K. Dobbins sitting here. J.K. at 33 is a steal. I've seen people recently get him in the fourth round because people are sleeping at the wheel. They run a ton, and this guy was a rookie last year, averaging 6.0 yards per carry. He was in the top five in efficiency out of all running backs in fantasy football. 6.0 yards per carry. 805 yards, nine rushing TDs. And yeah, he only pulled in 18 receptions for 120. He was a rookie. He was a rookie. What rookie running backs were pass protecting in 2020? The pandemic slowed them all down. And for everybody to assume that J.K. Dobbins coming out of 2020, where he did all of this in his first year, everybody assuming it is what it is, what you're looking at here is what you're gonna get. It's not gonna improve. His workload won't get bigger. That's crazy. He's electric. 6.0 yards a carry. Give me 1,000 to 1,100 yards on the ground. Give me another nine TDs on the ground and give me 30 plus receptions for, I don't know, 300 yards and two touchdowns. Give me, give me 11 total TDs and over 1,350 total yards. Give me a top 10 running back is what you're gonna give me. And I'm getting him in round three, baby. Doubt them all you want, hold my beer. I don't mind this value here. You can argue early quarterback, late quarterback. I've done that enough. You guys know my stance. As long as you're not passing on a, a J.K. Dobbins or a C.D. Lamb, a player like that, a difference maker, when you're passing on Lockett or, or Cooper Cup or Julio Jones for Patrick Mahomes, are you really going to lose your league because of that? Come on. I like Godwin. I like Carson. You might like Julio. You might like Cooper Cup. Are they really going to lose you your league if you pass on them? No. The answer is no. I'll answer it for you. No. JK, I'm taking over Mahomes. Even a guy like A-Rob. If you want to take A-Rob over Mahomes and go later quarterback, I'm fine. But stop talking like if you take Mahomes, you're going to lose your league. If you take Mahomes, you're at a disadvantage. Quarterbacks are so deep. Over Lockett, really? Over Cooper Cup? You might like Cup, but I can get Judy in round seven and I'm going to crush you at quarterback, and I think Judy's going to hold his own against Cooper Cup. Compare apples to apples. Use, use some logic when you talk about drafting a quarterback early. People just don't get this topic at all. They, they merely compare quarterback to quarterback. When the sixth quarterback is only uh, 11.5 points away from the nine, who cares? That has no relevance because the quarterback I'm taking, Mahomes or Allen, is going to destroy the people below them. I love Herbert. I love Kyler, but Mahomes and Allen, to me, can outscore everybody in fantasy football. You're going to pass on that for Cooper Cup. You're going to pass on that for Lockett. I'll, t I'll take Judy. I'll take Judy in round seven. You take Godwin, who I like. You take Cup, who's good. You take Lockett, who I don't like here. I'll take Mahomes. I'll take Judy. We'll circle back, have a cup of coffee, see who dropped more fire comparing your two with my two. Stop talking about early quarterback as a mistake. It's it's That's old. That's old school. Gr grow up. David Montgomery could earn this value. I don't mind it. Kyle Pitts, he could earn that, but he's not winning leagues from that, that value, I don't think. I think he's more so in Dynasty gonna gonna win leagues for people in the coming years. I think this is about right for him. Any earlier and you're, you're playing a little bit with fire, in my opinion. I'd rather have Hawkinson like in round six than taking Pitts a uh, round or two early than, than Hawkinson. In redraft, in redraft. And I love Pitts, but we, we need to, to have a little bit of caution expecting, you know, Hawkinson-like numbers. We're drafting Pitts over Hawkinson right now, people. I think Chase could have 1,100 yards and like nine, 10 touchdowns as a rookie. So this value he could earn, I like him a little later if possible. Ayuk, Ayuk is climbing fast. Not that I don't like it, but I liked him better when we were stealing him away. I do not like the Deontay Johnson value here. Juju, Claypool, Deontay, Big Ben's arm is about to fall off. Who knows if he stays healthy? The offensive line's horrible. I, I don't, I don't buy into this. Everybody expects a boatload of targets, but I'm telling you, people are overdrafting Deontay. 
Claypool's my number one in Pittsburgh. Claypool gets the TDs. Daryl Henderson's very interesting. I think, you know, he comes with a whole lot of risk because of McVay and how McVay's ignored him in the past, but he he is the veteran there. The odds are they will lean on him unless they bring in Lev Bell or somebody else. But will they trust the player they bring in? McVay's very, very weird about using newer talent and Hendy's got things down if he stays healthy. He literally could finally prove me right. He's a player I've missed on in the past because of the way McVay didn't use him. Don't go near Miles Sanders when you got a guy like Josh Allen right below him, ETN, Kyler Murray, all, all better options than, than go Miles Sanders. They're in a committee. The coaching staff has talked about it very, very openly. They don't plan on using one running back and Kenny Gainwell could be one of the bigger steals of 2021 in the very, very late rounds. You'll be hearing a lot more about Kenny Gainwell from me coming up. Love the ETN value. He could be really, really good. He's reportedly unguardable right now in practice. Again, I like Claypool a lot. This is probably the steal of the draft right here. I keep being told Smitty Josh Allen's going to round three. All the time, Smitty. He never falls out of round three. Well, according to the most up-to-date ADP rankings, he's still very much doubted, and that's good. He will climb. People will vault him on the regular into round three. Not every time, but on the regular. But according to this ADP right now, we have time to react and still scoop him up. In the fourth round, unless Lamb or JK fall somehow, and they won't. With the injuries to Cam and MT, I don't think they'll fall. Lamb and JK will most likely be gone every time. So give me Allen. Give me Allen over every name below. Even ETN. I like ETN, but give me Allen over every name below 10 times out of 10. This wins you a league. And back to what I was saying, back to what I've said pretty much my whole life since I came out of the womb, compare apples to apples when you talk about drafting an early quarterback. And if you're going to take Claypool or Odell Beckham Jr. or Robbie Anderson, Josh Jacobs, I'll take Sermon in round seven or eight, or I'll take Michael Carter in round six over your Josh Jacobs here and I'll beat you. My Josh Allen and Sermon. My Josh Allen and Carter. My Josh Allen and Mike Davis will beat whatever player you take even five or six picks above my Josh Allen pick with your quarterback you take later where I'm taking said Sermon or Carter or Jerry Judy. I will beat you. My two will beat your two. You can talk about early QB all you want, but talk about it right. Bring it proper. But Smitty. No, but Smitty. Bring it proper. We talked about this last time. What's Robbie Anderson even doing here? Don't go near Jacobs. I think Drake outscores him in 2021. This guy was off his rocker last year, flipping off his fans on IG. Didn't have his head right. Telling people to meet him at the stadium. Love this value. Love that value. Love that value. Love that value. I think I like the entire 60s. That could be good value here. I'm not crazy about the Debo value here. I think Ayuk's the number one. Gaskin's pretty decent here. Javante Williams, you gotta be kidding me. He's still falling. And, and that report, man, that beat writer helped us out. The guy the other day that said that, that Melvin Gordon is locked into the starting role. I wanna send that guy a bro fist email. That dude did us a solid. I love that guy. I hope he reports on Javante Williams more often because Javante Williams is at 67.9 in best ball ADP. <laughs> but Smitty, what about Melvin Gordon? Yeah, you keep drafting Melvin Gordon, all you Javante Williams doubters out there. Javante Williams is a top 10 running back once he gets in there and it might be week one he may not get the start and name but he's gonna get a lot of work and he's a great pass protecting back with good hands he will slide right into an every down roll and he will give mark my words Najee harris a run for Najee harris's money for the top rookie running back in 2021 i want javante in every league every league cream hunt this is pretty good value Chark, I think everybody's undervaluing Chark. Sermon, this would be a steal if you can get him in that range. I think he could definitely be a starter in name by the bye week. Maybe in week two, week three, week four, he's getting 10 to 12 carries a game. In this offense, Sermon will average over five yards per carry. Once Trey Lance is in the lineup too, it'll be so hard to contain the run. I love the Wilson value if you get boxed into a later quarterback approach. Mike Thomas is dropping appropriately. This isn't horrible value. I mean, you pass on a Mike Williams, a Gallup, a DJ Chark. I like Chark a lot at this value. Boyd, Sutton, 
I'm okay going MT here, but that's about it. I don't go MT any higher because you might not even get the old MT back even when he returns. I like Devontae Smith a lot. I, I like him in Dynasty a ton, obviously. He's like in my top five or six overall wide receivers in Dynasty. But for redraft, I don't I don't mind this value at all. I think he could really return uh, way more value than this, this ADP. Antonio Brown's pretty sneaky around the 80s because if, if one of Godwin or Evans go down, very likely, they're very likely to miss time. AB can step in and be a, a high-end wide receiver too any game he's starting. I'm not big on Edmonds. I don't care really where he's going. I guess right here he's decent value, but I'm not excited about it. Herbert, fantastic value. Sheesh, Smitty, that's why you wait on a quarterback. Again, I don't hate the idea of waiting on a quarterback and landing a Herbert this late. He tends to go a little higher in the leagues that I do, but if you get Herbert here and you can get a JK or Lamb home run. But again, as much as I love Herbert, as much as it makes me very, very nauseous to not draft him and to let somebody else steal him away at 80, again, comparing apples to apples, if you can grab a Jerry Judy, a Michael Carter, a Mike Davis, anybody around this area and couple that with a Josh Allen, you still got a better duo in Allen and Mike Davis, Allen and Carter, than you do Herbie and the player up above. So just make sure you understand what I'm saying with quarterback early. A-Rod, same thing. Carter, absolutely love it. And this is my point. Carter here instead of Herbert and Josh Allen up above. Josh Allen and Carter will destroy anybody's Herbert and player up above where Josh Allen went. Destroy it. So stop the argument already. Why is it so hard for people to get the two for two comparison? I don't really understand it. Again, love Michael Carter. He could be a high-end running back, too, when he's going in the 80s. That's ridiculous. Darnell Mooney, watch out for this guy. He's got breakout written all over him. I love this value. I love him in the 80s. I'll take him in the 90s all day long. Darnell Mooney, learn about it. James Robinson, steal at 97. Elijah Moore, going to be potentially a wide receiver one in the NFL. You heard it here. As a rookie, he could be phenomenal. He could be an amazing wide receiver three in 2021. He's fantastic to own in Dynasty. Him and Zach Wilson will come up together, mature together, build a, a strong rapport together. This guy has it out for everybody that got drafted ahead of him. In the locker room on a mirror or a piece of glass or whatever, he's got all the names of the wide receivers that got drafted ahead of him. I love it. The dude's a dog. Elijah Moore, know his name. Say his name. Say his name. You're damn right. Talk about winning your league, A.J. Dillon, at 99. If he gets in there, he's going to win you your league single-handedly. And if he doesn't, if he doesn't start a game, if Aaron Jones stays healthy, guess how many TDs this guy could score in a backup role? 8-10, to 10, flex-worthy no matter what. Earns his keep even if he never starts a game. Higby, love it. This could be the next breakout tight end from this late value, the Hawkinson of 2021. Hertz could completely destroy and annihilate this ADP. Love Noah Fant could be the next Hawkinson. Logan Thomas, Fant, Higby up above, Robert Tunyon, Goddard. Any questions about tight end? Trey Lance right here in the in the 110 area. Like this guy, this guy is so phenomenal. You need to draft him as your backup. If you can get him anywhere from 90 beyond, like reach a round and a half take Trey Lance as your backup. He'll give you so much trade potential later on. I love getting Trey Lance in, in redraft. In Dynasty, forget about it. There's Bobby Boy Tunyon. There's my boy, Tony Pollard. I said AJ Dillon will win leagues. Tony Pollard can win leagues too. And, and I'll venture to say Tony Pollard's my very, very favorite player to draft after like about pick 70. There's no player I'd rather own in fantasy football past around 70 or 80 overall than Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard is a top five to 10 running back per start. I hope he doesn't start a game because I love Zeke. He's a must cuff for Zeke owners, but Pollard is my favorite sleeping giant win a league player in 2021. You, you better be sure you own this guy, whether you own Zeke or not. In fact, I'm making it a requirement that everybody must own Tony Pollard. If you're a The Fantasy Football Show community member, Go draft him. I don't mind the value uh, of all these guys right here, but no one's like standing out. Again, I like Kenyon Drake more than Jacobs, and look how late Drake's going. All Camara owners need to own Lat Murray, and he's a good standalone running back to stash. There you have it, the 2021 ADP show breakdown. We do it every week using the underdog ADP rankings, and you can play underdog 
fantasy by going to smitty1.com this banner right here this exact banner will pop up make a minimum ten dollar deposit you get a free phone call from me you get 25 dollars bonus cash from underdog both limited time lock it in now you don't have to use it yet lock it in now go do it now before the offer goes away and you miss out and you don't have all this stuff walking into week one it's a 10 buck minimum deposit go do it get your phone call let me help you with your draft go to smitty1.com use promo code smitty but if you use the link at smitty1.com when you click on this exact banner it'll enter promo code smitty for you it does all the work now go do it and order my tech service at heysmitty.com i literally carry around two phones one is my personal phone the other is my heysmitty.com phone i'm texting you all day long learn about it go to heysmitty.com join me every tuesday and thursday on the fantasy football show live 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. every single Tuesday and Thursday. We're live for two hours straight every single Tuesday and Thursday. Join us. Let's go. This is the Fantasy Football Show with your host, Smitty. Top five running back. You're watching the Fantasy Football Show. Smitty. Woo! <laughs>